Gentlemen, it's given me the privilege tonight of raising my glass. It's my duty to uphold that age-old tradition of speaking tribute to the fairer sex, to remind us of how they should be honored and celebrated and cherished. And yet, until I set some things straight, I'm not inclined to do so. Let's be frank here, lads. We are constantly reminded by our lassies to do things. That deserves no toasts, no celebrations. Do the dishes, sweep the floor, chew with our mouth shut, do not pick your nose in public. They treat us like children. They fear our gathering with other men, as they assume we'll end up doing something stupid or dangerous, and that our hard-earned money will be spent on things like bail or excessive repairs of our repairs. In order to make my case here, I've pulled some true stories from the internet. <laughs> we are born mechanics, for example, <coughs> unlike what our fair companions think. Scott McKinney was a true man, a man's man, a mechanic at heart, owner of a purple Volkswagen in Scotland. And when the ignition on his trusty steed ceased operating, did he spend his hard-earned beer money on repairs? No. This true man of genius created a, a unique underhood ignition system that all it required was placing the car in gear, popping the bonnet, and then touching two ignition wires together. <laughs> it worked so well, in fact, that the coroner's report called it a unique starting mechanism <laughs> that allowed the car to move forward in first, second, and even third gear. A true man, a man's man, for all that. <laughs> Men are also not less intelligent in large groups or non effective with a hammer. I contend we are exactly as we always are. Three manly lads, just three, proved this to be true while demolishing a barn. It was the dead of winter, and these men set out in the bracing cold with this mammoth task ahead of them. Chainsaws in hand, they attacked this barn with gusto. And then the leader of this brilliant crew decided to step into history with one strategically placed cut. Standing two stories above the ground, he cut through the main support post and the entire barn before this destroyer of structures thundered to the ground beneath him. I'm sure for just a few seconds, he realized he had successfully completed his mission of conquest. <laughs> and his two friends would be able to share his greatness to those he left behind. <laughs> Our lassies need to stop this contention. We do stupid things in large groups and just be concerned every time we step out the door, pick up a hammer. And I think the story of Stephen McPherson will bring it all home. This was a hero in the battle against the most heinous of home invaders, the mole. <laughs> Churchill may have fought them on the beaches, but McPherson fought them on the front lawn. Taking several metal rods and against his wife's nagging advice that it just wouldn't work, he drove these rods into his yard, ready to connect them to the power that has sent many a criminal to its grave, to his grave. High voltage electricity. And indeed, it far exceeded anything his doubting wife thought him capable of. Not only were the moles driven from his yard, but he even electrified the very ground he stood upon. In fact, the police had to shut down power to the entire neighborhood in order to retrieve his body. A true man of accomplishment who did not listen to the depressing doubt of his better heart. <laughs> but with all that said, we still love and need our lassies, and I guess we probably should toast them. So gentlemen, I ask you to charge your glasses and be upstanding as we toast our lassies, because without them and their oh-so-gentle reminders, We'd probably be dead. <laughs> to the last one. <laughs> <last one. laughs>
it behoves me to thank him for his very thought-provoking speech. He spoke so eloquently, and I must, must admit rather long-windedly, about the manly man's creative, courageous genius. And I thank him for proving indisputably that laddies really need their lassies. We see all such potential in our laddies, and since we're created to be their helpers, of course we come alongside them and give them all the encouragement they could possibly ask for. Trouble is, they don't ask for it, and they don't listen to it when we do graciously give it to them anyway. Allow me to make my case. When the lawnmower broke, the laddie's wife kept hinting to him that he should get it fixed. Somehow he always had something better to do. Finally, she thought of a clever way to make her point. When he arrived home one day, he found her seated in the tall grass, busily snipping away with a tiny pair of sewing scissors. He watched silently for a moment, and then he went into the house. When he came out again, he handed her a toothbrush. When you finish cutting the grass, he said, you might as well sweep the driveway. <laughs> the doctors say he will walk again, but he'll always have a limp. <laughs> there are times, though, when our laddies truly try and assist us in our tasks. Take the lad who asked if he could assist in preparing a meal. Gratefully, his last said, take this bag of tatties um, and put them in the pot to, sorry, take this bag of tatties, peel half of them and put them in the pot to boil. After a short while, pleased to have such willing help, she looked in the pot to see how the tatties were cooking. Here's what she saw. <laughs> a pot of peas. <laughs> this might explain it best though. In a hospital in Edinburgh, some relatives gathered in the waiting room as their family member lay gravely ill. When the doctor came in, he said, I'm afraid the only hope left for your loved one is a brain transplant, and you'll have to pay for the brain yourself. After a few minutes, one of them asked, how much does a brain cost? The doctor responded, 32,500 pounds for a male brain and 13,000 pounds for a female brain. There was a momentary silence. The ladies in the room, they were trying not to smile, avoiding eye contact with the lassies, but some of them were actually smirking. One lad finally blurted out the question everybody wanted to ask. Why is the male brain so much more than a female brain? The doctor smiled. It's just standard pricing procedure. We have to mark down the price of the female brains because they've been used. <laughs> ah, well. As Robert Burns himself said, a man's a man for all that. And nonetheless, we love them and we'd never be without them. So, lassies, please be upstanding and join me in a toast to the laddies. The laddies. The laddies. <laughs>